Please welcome to the stage Vice President and Head of Amazon Marketplace, Peter Farisee. Thank you guys and uh, good morning. Great to see such a uh, nice crowd here. Grateful that you guys would come. Uh, it's been a great actually couple days. I don't go to very many conferences, but I think the Shop Talk uh, crew has done an amazing job. Would you guys join me in giving these guys a big round of applause? I'm very impressed whenever I get lost, there's a yellow shirt directing me on where to go, and I think that alone is, uh, is incredible. So thank you guys for coming here this morning. Um, I'm gonna talk mostly about a really interesting trend that I think is gonna ch have a chance to change the world. And I want many of you to come join me uh, as part of that trend. But I thought I'd first kick off and tell you a little bit about uh, the Amazon Marketplace. For those of you I haven't met yet, I've been at Amazon the past 11 years. And the last eight years, I've led this wonderful business called the Amazon Marketplace. And this past year, we announced that more than 50% of the units that are sold on Amazon actually come directly from these small, medium businesses and entrepreneurs and these brands. Many of them are like you here in the audience. And so we launched the marketplace in, uh, in 2000. Uh, some of you may know we have 11 different global marketplaces across the world, and uh, we're in, uh, we serve customers in over 189 countries. So it's a very, very inspiring business to be a part of. Uh, one of the things that I love about Amazon the most is that it's a very, uh, principle-based company. And what I mean by that is that we have a set of leadership principles that we really use every day to make hard decisions, to make business decisions, and to kind of think about how to solve hard problems. And one of the ones that I know many of you are familiar with is the one that's at, always at the very top of our list of leadership principles. It's called customer obsession. And one of the philosophies that Jeff had uh, embedded in the DNA of the company at the very beginning is this idea of starting with customers and working backwards. And so for all of us, it's kind of fun rewarding because as we think about hard problems in the world, we sort, we, we sort of free ourselves up from the constraints of what we know that can be done or what the, that others are doing, and we start with the customer and we kind of work backwards from there. So it's very enjoyable. The thing that many of you may not know is how broad the definition of customers is at Amazon. And so, how many, can, I, can I just get a quick show of hands? How many of you are Amazon Prime members right now? Okay, fantastic. Wow, that's great. I, I guess I should say thank you to begin with at the very beginning of this. I'm very, very grateful uh, that we have so many Prime members here today, and it's inspiring. Uh, we're, we're, we want to work hard to serve all of you very, very well. But one of the things that's interesting in my business is that we also consider brand owners and entrepreneurs to be our customers. And so I think every day about how can I help uh, these small, medium businesses be successful all over the world. And so with that in mind, uh, this mission we're on is, is fun because we think about what it's like to be an entrepreneur and how we can help them be successful. And this past year, we introduced uh, two metrics uh, that I think kind of give us a glimpse of whether or not we're having some success. The first one is that we began to measure how many businesses sell more than $100,000 of their products on Amazon. And we're using this $100,000 uh, level as kind of a sign that these businesses are reaching an inflection point and they're about to get uh, larger from there. That 100,000 number of businesses is up from 70,000 the year prior. And so we're really excited about uh, the progress we're seeing there. Uh, maybe one that's even uh, uh, more amazing and really inspiring is that we did an economic study of how many jobs do these brand owners and businesses create around the world. And last year, we believe they created 600,000 jobs, which is really, really incredible. And so this is one of the reasons why we love our mission so much, is that this really is you know, the health of, of your area of the world really depends a lot upon the health of small and medium businesses, and so we're very, very passionate about that. And many of you here in this audience have great brands and great products, and so my presentation today is really kind of an open invitation for us to work together and for us to help you grow. Now, I'm gonna take a little bit of a turn here that'll be surprising, and I promise to get things back on track, but we're building something in Seattle that some of you may have seen and it's a little bit unusual. Uh, these big three globes, I guess would be the best way to describe them, are like three 
big connected greenhouses, and they're called biospheres. And the idea behind it is to bring together over 3,000 unique species of plants from 30 different countries across the world. So for the first time, people could actually enjoy all those plants together in one area. It's really amazing. And it's going to be kind of cool uh, for those who wonder, is it Wi-Fi enabled and can you actually do some work in there? The answer is yes. Uh, so it's going to be kind of a fun workspace for Amazonians uh, during the day. But we're kind of doing a fun thing to help the plants uh, nurture and grow, which is that we kick everybody out at 6 p.m. every night. We crank up the humidity to 85 percent. We crank down the temperature to 55 degrees. And it turns out for these plants, that's the perfect environment to help them thrive. And so funny enough, I'm using that as a little bit of an analogy for what we're trying to do with brands, because our goal is for us to do the same thing for brand owners all around the world. Now, as I talk about brands, I think many of you, uh, myself included, would think of some of the world's most popular brands that we've done a lot of work with. Uh, I put a few here up, my favorite. I could have made a very long list here. There's some very big and well-established brands, Coca-Cola, Disney, Gillette. They're just amazing. And if you think about the history of building a brand, it took many, many years and billions of dollars of investment in order to build a brand. My first job out of, of college, I worked for Coca-Cola, and I was always amazed at the, at the uh, amazing brand they had, but also the care they took to continue to keep that brand going. But the trend I see that I want to make all of you aware of, and I want you to come join me, is that I think what's going to happen in the future is that people are going to be able to create brands that are th this distinctive, but it's going to be much faster and much more efficient, and I'm going to tell you how. And so many of the brands that we're seeing emerging on the Amazon marketplace are brands that some of you may know of today, but I, I think many of these have a shot to be some of the most popular brands in the world tomorrow. And I'm happy to say in a few minutes, I'm actually going to bring up a couple of these brand owners up on stage with me so you can hear from them directly. But brands like TRX and Stansteady, uh, they're really, in my mind, at the forefront of this amazing population of brand owners and manufacturers who want to go directly to consumers. So what I'm going to do for the rest of my presentation before those guys come up is I'm going to give you a quick sneak preview of what I hear from brand owners. And so if I put brand owners as a customer and I work backwards from there, what are five things that they tell me they need, and then what are we trying to do at Amazon to support all these brand owners? So the first one um, I think you'll find is, is pretty straightforward. Uh, number one, uh, brands and new businesses in general they really want access to, uh, to customers. And that, of course, that makes a whole lot of sense. You guys know we have uh, access to 300 million customers worldwide. What's interesting is, in the old model of having to go through an intermediary, this new world is very, very different. All of you could, this afternoon, on your laptop, register in our 11 different marketplaces across the world and reach 300 million consumers directly with no intermediary. You're in charge of your business and you're in control. And I think that model, as we look forward, is going to be very powerful. The other thing that uh, uh, third-party data suggests is that customers are actually engaging more on Amazon as time goes on. And so uh, 75 minutes is right now the time that customers are spending every time they visit Amazon. And that's actually grown 42% over the past two years. The reason I think it's important and relevant for you is if you want to have a chance to tell your story, if you want customers to get a chance to know your product better, this is exactly the environment I think you need. Now, many brand owners would say also, hey, how about this Amazon Prime program? And by evidence, by the number of hands I saw up, uh, obviously, they're headed down the right path. And the Prime program is really wonderful. Prime customers are our customers that are the most engaged. They shop with the most frequent frequency. And interestingly to me, and I think for many of you, they're also the group of customers that shop the most across categories. And so uh, we have uh, this past year in the US over 50 million uh, unique products that are available for prime free two-day delivery. And so getting your products to be prime eligible I think is a really good strategy for a brand owner. And I think it allows you to reach a population of customers that's special and unique and, and could care about your products. Uh, what, what's interesting is that 2016 was actually the best year we had uh, for uh, Prime. Uh, we had uh, tens of millions of uh, new Prime members join, 
And it was the largest uh, amount of new Prime members that have joined in our history for any one particular year. So quite exciting and a lot more to come on that front. Uh, we also uh, hear from brands that it's, it's very critical that we protect their intellectual property. And I think you don't have to, uh, to go very far without seeing the issues that exist as the world becomes a more global economy. And so one of the things we're, we're doubling down our investment in is how do we work with brands to protect their IP and how do we create a really, maintain a really great customer experience and help protect these brands? So one of the things we've launched in beta right now that we're gonna scale out over the next few months is an exciting program called the Brand Registry. And the idea behind the Brand Registry service is that any brand in the world can identify where they own the intellectual property through copyright, patent, et cetera, and put Amazon in a position where we can protect your products uh, across the Amazon marketplace across the world. And the companies we have in the Brand Registry so far love it and think it's a really big deal. Uh, I'll also tell you, after all the keynotes this morning, I have a couple of folks from my team, from the Brand Registry team up front, uh, make your way up to the stage if you want to after all the keynotes are done, and these guys would be happy to tell you more about it. But we're not stopping there. We also have launched a, a really cool uh, combination of technology uh, trying to counter counterfeits called uh, transparency. And it's a really cool innovation that allows you as a manufacturer to actually keep a trace of your product throughout the supply chain so that you, the brand owner, knows that these products that are being manufactured and ready for distribution are authentic. The cool part of it is it also has a customer-facing app. And so you can also allow customers uh, to also ensure that the products that they're buying are, in fact, your authentic products. So two of many, many investments we're making, but all along this line of how do we really work with all of you to protect your brands on Amazon. The third thing I hear a lot from brand owners is uh, the desire to drive awareness. Uh, and that, of course, makes a lot of sense to me. I think, the, um, as many of you know, 55% of customers start their product discovery on Amazon, and that's actually up 26% year over year. So more and more customers are starting with Amazon first and exploring new products. But one of the challenges as a brand owner is what we like to call the cold start problem. I have a product, I think it's terrific, but no one knows about it yet, and so we've really worked closely with brand owners to develop a number of advertising, marketing, and merchandising programs that are specifically targeted to solve this cold start program. My favorite one that may, many of you may have seen is called sponsored products. And sponsored products is cool because you target a keyword on Amazon, and that link from the sponsored ad goes directly to your listing on Amazon. And so if you guys think about the old school business model where people used to spend a lot on unaided awareness, aided awareness, familiarity, trial, and purchase, this is really meant to, to change the world dramatically here, which is you can actually take people from unaided awareness directly to purchasing your product uh, with one link and one piece of advertising. Uh, over the past few years, Amazon's actually become the fifth largest uh, digital, digital media publisher. And so the number of customers that, that have a chance to view your product and see your product is incredible. But maybe as importantly, your ability to link that to spend very efficiently and drive them directly to purchase is a really great opportunity. Number four is one that I think uh, you guys know a lot about, so I'm going to probably flip through this pretty quickly. But we offer world-class fulfillment and uh, support services. Uh, we announced last year that we have fulfilled over 2 billion units with our flagship program, Fulfillment by Amazon, or FBA, as we like to call it. It's an amazing program that allows a brand owner to really focus on what they do best and let Amazon take over the distribution for them. Uh, we serve customers in over 189 countries across the world, which is great. But I'm going to give you two hidden gems of why I think, as a brand owner, uh, using our fulfillment services is a, is a great move. One of them is, uh, as part of using fulfillment by Amazon, I don't know if you know this, we actually also take care of the customer service on your behalf. And what brand owners discover is that it's not too difficult to take good care of customers in your home country. Maybe you could expand to a couple of other countries. But as you try to sell your product ar across the world, it's very difficult to scale your customer service uh, capabilities as well. Think of all the languages, all the complexity, all the time zones. And so part of what we provide for those who use FBA is 
we take care of all that on your behalf. I think as big a deal uh, was actually the wonderful keynote for those who were here on Sunday. Uh, I got to watch uh, Stephanie Landry talk about Prime now, but I love the innovations that are happening here uh, around fulfillment. Because uh, I think it's, 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 it's an interesting area because I think customers are really driving a lot of people to make investments here and figure out new ways to deliver products. Obviously, if you take a look at the lower right of the screen, we get a lot of attention from drone delivery. I think that's going to be incredible. The potential there is, is, uh, is incredible. Uh, my, the Pharisee family favored is the Amazon Fresh truck you see up there. Uh, we're in about 15 or 16 markets across the U.S., uh, but if you like fresh grocery delivery to your doorstep or scheduled time, it's just an amazing, amazing service. But I'll go back to the remarks that, uh, that Stephanie made on Sunday. Probably the biggest deal, I think, for brand owners is that the delivery speed expectations are increasing. There's no question about it. When you take a look at the data, Stephanie made this point, two-day delivery is kind of the norm right now, but we're headed to two-hour delivery and one-hour delivery that's what customers want, and that's where I think uh, the business is headed. And so for a brand owner, an entrepreneur, you really get to take advantage of all the investments that we're making in these fast delivery services and all these unique services uh, to fulfill your products, uh, which I think is great. And I'll close out with one that uh, some of you may not know about. It's kind of a fun business. Uh, about four years ago, we began to hear a lot from businesses on Amazon that one of their biggest constraints, funny enough, was capital. And it kind of makes sense. Many businesses reach this inflection point uh, where without capital, they can't keep their hot products in stock or they can't expand their product line. And so we built a, a, a new business called Amazon Lending, which has been uh, really wonderful. In the letter that uh, Jeff Bezos sent to shareholders last year, uh, we highlighted uh, our first stat about Amazon Lending, which is that at that time, we had loaned over $1.5 billion to small and medium businesses. Um, across the world. So it's a very fun and rewarding business. One of, one of the great stories I'll just give you quickly is actually from uh, a company called Tower Paddle Boards. Stephen Aristall is the founder, and although he won Shark Tank and Mark Cuban took an interest in his company, you're not going to believe it, he couldn't actually get a loan from a bank to keep his business uh, growing and thriving and expanding. And so when you read the articles about uh, Stephen, uh, he highlights Amazon lending as one of the things uh, that the, he attributes the great success they've had at building kind of a lifestyle uh, surfing brand, if you will. Okay, wonderful. I'm so happy uh, and very, very grateful to have uh, two great brand owners join me up here on stage. Would you guys join me in giving a, just a huge round of applause to uh, Dave Martin and Randy Hetrick? So great for you guys to come here. We got uh, Dave from the East Coast, Randy representing the West Coast. I'm a Midwest guy, so we've got every geography covered. Uh, I would love for you guys, you, both of your stories are, are very inspiring about why you became an entrepreneur. And maybe, Dave, I could start with you. Would you guys share with this crew, why did you become an entrepreneur? Well, it's, it's funny. It was pretty much by accident. So on New Year's Day 2012, I was on my way to the gym and got in a car accident. And it was pretty minor. I actually continued on to the gym after filling out the police report. <laughs> and, but I discovered over the next couple weeks, I actually wasn't fine. My back was hurting me uh, from sitting all day at work, and it was fine on the weekends. So I did what I think many of us do for medical advice. I went to Google. And it, <laughs> <laughs> it, it recommended that I try a standing desk which this was 2012, and, and nobody was doing standing desks at that point. So I immediately went to Amazon to look for the standing desk to buy. And there really wasn't anything that was appropriate for my cubicle office. Um, everything started at $1,500, and it just it didn't fit my needs. So I ended up creating my own cardboard box standing desk at work, and I was blown away by the response I got from my colleagues. They kept pouring in with questions about what was I doing and why, but also sharing their own stories of their back injuries and how they felt that this product would help, a standing desk product would help them as well. So I took that feedback and worked with my father-in-law to prototype out some standing desks and got them live and got them in the office. And based on my colleagues' feedback, decided I'm going to go ahead and source this and start selling this product. 
So when you say entrepreneur by accident, it literally means uh, it literally by accident by in this case. Literally by accident with a, that's, a car accident. That's a, that's a great story. And, and Day and her company have become one of our largest businesses on our Amazon business platform. Uh, we'll talk more about that in a minute. Randy, uh, I've heard your story before, but you got to give uh, this crew. It's an amazing, amazing story. Tell this crew how you became an entrepreneur. Well, I, I love that story. Yeah. Mine is <laughs> sort of even maybe less probable. Um, I, I spent sort of the first half of my adult life as a Navy SEAL, um, and we were deploying around the world a lot, and you couldn't take a gym with you. And so I came up with an idea on a, on a deployment uh, to Southeast Asia to, to train for the climbing part of the mission uh, using an odd assortment of things. I had accidentally deployed my jiu-jitsu belt stuffed in my bag, and I pulled it out, tied a knot in the end of it, threw it over the door inside this little warehouse, and started leaning back to lifting my body weight, and uh, made a couple of quick modifications using some nylon from the parachute harnesses that we had, and ended up creating a body weight training harness that um, uh, was able to perform hundreds of of exercise movements. And so I ended up uh, leaving the SEAL teams eventually, going to business school where you, they're thinking about starting a business. And uh, at Stanford, I met a bunch of the coaches who thought this crazy little harness was a great idea. And I ended up launching a company uh, called TRX in um, really 2004. And it was, it was an interesting timing because it was right at the moment when Amazon was, was expanding sort of from books to other things. So we got to be part of the first wave of uh, other product retailers on Amazon. And, uh, you know, we've been at it together ever since. Those are both great stories. Very, very inspiring. Dave, you had some digital uh, marketing experience before you decided to become an entrepreneur. But what's your advice for people who have a brand and are considering moving into e-commerce or possibly joining the Amazon marketplace? Sure. I've talked to a lot of people about being on Amazon and and talk to them about why they are or aren't on Amazon. And the, what I always come back to is, like you were talking about in your presentation, over half of people start their search for a product on Amazon. And if you're not on Amazon, you're not going to be found. And when you think about getting on Amazon, it's all about making sure you're telling the story of your product. So looking at that product listing and making sure it really tells the story of the product. What does the product look like? Not one photo, but lots of photos showing all the angles of the product. How would that product be used? Showing someone using it or showing that product in its natural environment. And then making sure the description really explains everything about the product. Um, I think as, as Amazon customers, we've all seen the, the listings that really do a good job and we, we can feel very comfortable and secure. This is the product I want and you can trust the product and believe in the product. And then we've seen the products where there's one picture and it says fits all. And, and making sure that you've really set yourself up for success. That's great advice. Uh, in the letter to shareholders I referenced that Jeff wrote last year, he talked about Amazon being a great place to fail. Randy, a lot of entrepreneurs and brand owners do fail. Uh, did you have any failures, and what, what did you learn from it that would benefit this audience? Well, you know, I, with due respect to Mr. Bezos, I, I would suggest that you know, failure, what is that, especially in an early stage entrepreneurial venture? Really, it means you tried something that didn't necessarily work the way you wanted, you learn from it, and you pivot. And so I, I actually think that Amazon is an incredible place for new entrepreneurs to test fly uh, new products, new concepts, new approaches at pretty lo low risk. And as an, as an entrepreneur, you're trying to de-risk the business um, throughout the company's lifespan, but especially in the earliest days, right? So Amazon allows you to do that. I heard you talking about a few of the different programs. Yeah to do that without setting up fulfillment, without setting up customer service, without spending a lot of the money that otherwise, if you quote unquote fail, which I would view instead as you learned from the market and you pivoted to become more successful than your initial you know, foray was, you do it at, at very, very low risk. So I would agree with him 100% that Amazon's a great place to do that. And, that's great. And that's a great point. And one of the things that, that I've shared with a lot of people, they say, well, I'm just not sure my business is ready for Amazon yet because mm -hmm. of the enormous customer base. Mm -hmm. And I let them know, you can, you can literally send three units into Amazon, one unit, 50 units. You don't have to go big. You can go very small and still take advantage of the entire Amazon marketplace and that prime shipping. That's a great point. Yeah, 300 million customers, if you thought about that demand spike overnight, does seem overwhelming. Uh, Randy, one of the things uh, they say is... Uh, you know, a best compliment is by someone trying to copy uh, something that you've done. 
I see your, your black and yellow striped uh, TRX uh, straps in every gym uh, across America, but it does mean uh, you've had threats from people who are trying to infringe on your IP. What have you learned from that, and, and uh, any advice for the audience on that front? Yeah, I mean, I, th I think that there's, there's concern out there in the online marketplace in general, and it's definitely justified. If you build a brand that has any level of success, you're going to get a whole variety of Me Too's from the outright counterfeits to you know, IP infringing knockoffs. And one of the, one of the challenges with a, with a platform like Amazon and the really the frictionless um, interface that Amazon created, which I don't think initially anticipated necessarily the way that that could be gamed by fraudsters, that can become a problem. And as I mentioned, we were early, early to the party. So we got to experience that whole, um, uh, you know, the goods and the bads of it. What I will say, and I wouldn't have necessarily said a few years ago, is that Amazon really has been a, a, a strong partner with TRX in, in trying, and I know other brands, trying to combat this. And it's not an easy task, because these cats are wily, but uh, Amazon has put in place a whole bunch of different protective initiatives in addition to its business initiatives to really help protect brands um, and in addition to the transparency program that you were talking about, the brand registry, what people might not know is we're actually co-complainants on a lawsuit against a counterfeit ring. So that's pretty non-traditional um, in terms of partnering and I, I've, I've found it to be um, very earnest, it being Amazon, in its efforts to protect brands and uh, it's certainly been welcomed. Yeah, and I, I can definitely attest to that as well. We, we love brand registry and we've had companies that sell similar products and don't understand that certain words are our IP mm. and they'll use our words in their listings and we can work with Amazon to get those words removed, our brand name words. That's great. We talked a little bit about the expectations of customers about faster delivery speeds and more on demand. Day, uh, any advice here for the audience on how to think about that if you're a brand owner? Absolutely, and I think it just, it always goes back to your experience as a, your personal experience as a customer. Um, when we like to have talk about it at work all the time where we're searching for things on Amazon and we just filter for Prime and we don't even want to look at anything else. Mm -hmm. We're willing to pay the extra money in some cases, or in some cases it's the same price, but we want our goods there in two days. Mm -hmm. And with Amazon, absolutely, you want to be using that Prime function. This, the, the world is becoming more and more concerned about getting things quickly, and Amazon is amazing at, at letting just brand sellers, if they're small or large, take advantage of that prime shipping. Yeah, I think you had shared with me as part of serving other businesses, uh, it's even a more demanding environment because many of these businesses want their office supplies very, very quickly. And so it's an even faster expectation than maybe consumers. And so. Well, and for us, it's important because, you know, when the impulse to get fit strikes, we want to snap too and get to the product, right? That Before sounds you like your a, mind. Yeah, it normally happens around January 1st uh, mm -hmm. as you were going to exercise for many people. How about, uh, I, I'd love to hear maybe in closing a uh, quick comment from each of you on where you go from here. Day, you guys are, you guys are actually the great example of this is the right point for, for more capital to help you grow the Stand Steady brand, uh, not just on Amazon, but beyond. What, what are your plans? Well, we love selling on Amazon, and as you talked about, so many customers are on Amazon. And what I don't think you did mention is Amazon has this huge Amazon business initiative where they're working on making it so that not just all of our customer, our personal purchases are happening on Amazon, but all of our corporations that we work for, they're gonna start placing their orders more and more on Amazon as well. So we sell office products, primarily standing desks, and we're looking to really rise with Amazon into that business space, expand out into different types of office products, and uh, sell to those larger corporations. That's terrific. Look forward to seeing all that. Randy, where does TRX go from here? You guys going to make weights someday? Wouldn't that be ironic after we're, we're broadening, being no weights? We're broadening <laughs> our, our stance in the training universe yeah. to include other products um, beyond the suspension trainer that we, that we created. Um, but we've been a B2B business for the better part of 10 years. The big new horizon for TRX is taking the same kinds of tools and methodologies that we've been delivering to gyms and athletic training facilities um, to the great untrained masses, right, to the consumer landscape. And Amazon's gonna be a, a key piece of that in addition to other, other channels of distribution. Um, so that's the big new frontier. And then beyond that, you know, we, we spend a lot of time, and you know I'm, I'm passionate about this, mm -hmm. 
the issue of uh, veteran support, because I came from the SEAL teams and have been fortunate. And um, so one of the things that, and I certainly appreciate Amazon's initiative in, on this area as well, is helping vets transition from service and deployment overseas into uh, you know, reintegration as you know, the citizen soldier concept, reintegration. And I would encourage you guys um, who are hiring to really take a look at veterans because you get some incredible gems and, and, and helping them transition is one of, the, one of the big things philanthropically that TRX uh, is all about. Very inspiring. Uh, if there's any uh, one in the audience that we can be helpful to follow up with, uh, we created a quick email alias. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to be helpful for you on your journey as you think about building your brand. Uh, would you guys join me in a great round of applause uh, for these great entrepreneurs? Very inspiring story. Thank you very much.